Welcome to Raise Your Daily Vibration. This is Inelia Benz for Ascension101.com. Today's topic is something that I get a lot of emails about and something that I think is relevant for everybody on the planet, really, that's awake or awakening or has just woken up. And basically, it's about how to deal with our friends, relatives, co-workers, who are fast asleep and um, are basically affecting us in a couple of ways. One of those is that they could be full of programs and triggers and stuff and they're reacting then rather than responding and that type of thing. So they lower the vibration of our environment. And the other aspect of this is that we're all here and are very compassionate and when we realize how the planet is working and that uh, we can really affect our lives by raising our personal vibration, we can manifest our reality. We are manifesting our reality all the time. It's just that now we can do it consciously. And all these type of things, we then also sometimes become over enthusiastic and want to share that information with everybody we know but not everybody is open to it. And sometimes we can have a very righteous energy behind it, which will make people react against it. So instead of achieving our goal, which is to allow people to empower themselves, to have tools that will help them in their lives, we're basically, uh, they feel attacked. They feel their reality attacked and they shut off any type of information that we may want to receive. Also, um, in my own experience, I find that um, there are individuals who are very much stuck in a paradigm of um, stuck in, in, a, in a, either a cultural belief or a religious belief, for example, or a societal belief that says that all these things are mumbo jumbo and um, you know, I have a very good, good, really close friend who, for example, is a Jehovah's Witness and she has a different name for God. I don't give it a gender. I don't separate it from my own essence, yeah? In that religion, they have a savior. In the old paradigm where the savior comes in and saves the people, they have lots of rules and regulations about uh, what they're, how they live. And also, um, they believe that the Savior is separate from themselves. So even though we both believe that there's a higher source of energy, a higher intelligence, a cosmic consciousness, a divine consciousness, we interpret that completely differently. Yet we're very good friends, and we get on great. Uh, so it's... It's a matter of how do we commute how do we communicate with others? How do we move forward in life knowing that our you know it's like one of the biggest fears for example are people are saying, well, you know, I'm very interested in my own ascension and I'm doing all this work, but I'm very afraid that my friends, my children, my parents, my brothers and sisters, my cousins, are going to be left behind. What can I do? Yeah. And, um, or I have my husband is lowering my vibration, my wife is lowering my vibration. I do all these things in our lives. I do feng shui on my house. I do this and that. And they, or they come in and I'm in a really good space. And then they come in with all that negativity and they invalidate me, they invalidate my work, they lower my vibration, they get into arguments, and all this type of thing, yeah? So, first of all, we take responsibility for everything that happens here in our environment, including the way that other people react. Responsibility is not fault. It's completely different to fault. It's a completely different energy. Fault is the old paradigm way of invalidating somebody. Responsibility is basically the ability to respond. Yeah? So we can respond. We have the power, ability, and we can consciously respond to situations, to people, and to 
the way that people want to engage with us in communication. So what is the difference? Well, the first one is um, normally the way we are brought up and everything in the society, we're taught to react, yeah? So we react. Everything is about reaction, how we, others react to us and how we react to others, how we react to the environment. And response is completely different. So, for example, somebody could be coming up to me extremely angry, low vibrational, and everything else, and the way that I choose to respond is different to how I will react. So if my blood sugar is low, I haven't eaten, haven't slept, I'm tired, and I'm dehydrated, I will automatically react. Yeah, I will react in, in the same energy, and I will attack them back, and will get into an argument and all that stuff. But if I have taken care of my physical body, I am well fed, I am, I'm well hydrated, I'm well rested, and I've done my daily meditation and other, I used the tools during that day, like the fear processing exercise and other things, then that I, I'm in a, in a position of power, a power, an ability to do. I'm able to respond. So I can simply respond by saying nothing. And simply being, yeah? I can simply stand there and abs do absolutely nothing. I can respond by acknowledging the other person and seeing exactly what's going on. I can respond by walking away and closing the door gently. <laughs> the slamming would be the reaction, right? <laughs> but if we simply walk away and close the door, that's a response. We can respond in many ways. We can be very firm and say, I'm not willing to have your, uh, this energy in my field right now or in my home, I would like you to leave. Yeah, very easy response. Um, so basically, we, one of the things we can do with them is taking responsibility for that. And if it's a long-term thing, and I've lived through this, you know, long-term thing of somebody, a spouse or a loved one or a family member that we're living with or sharing some sort of close relationship with whether it's work or living situation and they do something to lower vibration all the time and that relationship it's very simple very very simple you can have you can before you go there you can have lots of various steps for example you can process everything that happens inside of you is actually your responsibility which means that you are able to respond to it so if you get angry, you can process that anger. If you get afraid, you can process that fear. If you get, um, if you feel pain, you can process that pain. Yeah. So that's all something that you can do. It's extremely empowering to be able to do that. We process it. If you don't have a processing tool, go to the ascension101.com site, click on tools, see the fear processing exercise, click on that. The full text is there. And you can change the word fear for anything else. You can change it for anger, for pain, for um, a memory, um, any type of negative reaction, everything. You can use it for absolutely everything. So you process all that. That would be the first step. Secondly, would be to have a conversation with that person's higher self. So you go into a meditative state, an altered state, and you contact the higher self of the other person. You say, it is my intent to change this relationship to a very positive, supporting, nurturing relationship that serves myself as well as the other person. Yeah, And you can have that, that conversation with that higher self. And then, uh, after that, of course, you can do... Um, a, uh, you can really respect the choice, and this is really, really important, you see. Um, the persons who are asleep around us are taking a, a lot of effort for them to stay asleep. There are di dietary requirements, there are drugs that people are, are taking, there's a lot of alcohol, there's a lot of television, um, a lot of fear mongering, uh, a lot of investment on the society and the individual themselves to stay asleep and we have to respect the fact that their higher self thinks it's more positive for them to stay asleep yeah and to have a sleep re uh, reality and even perhaps reincarnate again in the future in a sleeping uh, state 
So that would be a next step. We accept and respect the other person's higher self decision to keep that person asleep. And that's a tough one, yeah? So when that happens, at the same time, it was also that person's higher self decision to have you in their environment, especially if you're like uh, a family relative, yeah? So what you can do, you're actually very empowered to do, to enable them to wake up if that was their choice, or at least to seed the seeds of enlightenment and awaken, awakenness in their lives. And they might awake themselves this lifetime or they might be next lifetime or in a hundred lifetimes, but the seed is there. How do you do that? Well, you become, you, you actively raise your personal vibration every day. Yeah. And very simple methods, you meditate, there's loads of free meditations on the tool section as well. You can do the Ascension 101 course. Um, you can do the other courses on my website and listen to the calls. You do that. You, you inform yourself. You empower yourself. Those are That's what they're there for. There's a huge, huge library of articles in the Ascension 101 website as well that you can use. Everything's there. Everything's there. And you can... Do processing every single day. Process your fears at least every single day. Uh, inform yourself if there's other teachers, guides, people that you really uh, respect and you feel inspired by. Go and listen to them. Go and listen to their pods, um, to their podcasts, to their uh, courses, um, do their meditations, listen, read their blogs, you know. So actively every day, spend, I would say, about if between five minutes to an hour, two hours, really immersing yourself in high vibrational material. Uh, you can also look at your diet and eliminate the, or at least reduce, because sometimes eliminating is really difficult, the high toxins, the, 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 the foodstuffs that are being placed there to really lower our vibration. And the first one on the list would be refined white sugar. So reduce it as much as you can. I find that replacing it with honey is the best way to wean yourself off it. Yeah. Then I would um, also look at the meats that you eat. If you're still eating meat, and that's perfectly fine, um, I would look at the types of meat that you eat. If you are going to eat meat, make sure that it's happy meat, so like happy animals like uh, free-range, um, grass-fed, um, everything that has been out there being happy, leading a, a useful so so social life with other animals of their species. Do not eat, or at least avoid <laughs> if you possibly can, anything that has been produced in battery conditions. And this includes vegetables as well, because uh, plants and vegetables are also alive. They're just as sentient and alive as cows and chickens and pigs and turkeys. They're just as conscious. They have elementals. And the way in which they have grown up is very important. And when you prepare your food, uh, do the blessing, yeah? Whatever religion or whatever ways or formats that you have to do that, do it. The way that I do it, I, I'm just going to... I breathe deeply and I go into an altered state, I tap into joy, light, love, our source energy, and I imagine it in my hands, yeah, so I, I, you can rub your hands and you can feel it, and my hands start feeling the energy, yeah, you, they can start feeling the energy and it grows, and I just simply put my hands and feel the energy going into that food, yeah, so that's charging it, uh, the preparation, before the preparation, during the preparations, and before you eat, any, at any time, in none of those, any of those, you can do it. And you can do it when you go to a restaurant and stuff as well. So that's another thing you can do to raise your personal vibration every day. And why are you doing this? Because not only is it raising your personal vibration, but also it's raising the, your environmental vibration. So if you're in a room, that room is going to be a high vibrational room, right? 
And somebody who walks into that room is going to be in a, it will have the, the choice to um, reach that level of vibration. And that's all we do, day in, day out, we stay at the high vibration and we allow people to have that choice. And um, slowly but surely, you will get surprised, you will get shocked sometimes, yeah? That people you would never expect will come up to you and start asking you really meaningful questions. So that, that's kind of cool. Now with regards to when you find somebody you really like, yeah? Like a guide or a teacher or somebody. And you want to share it out to everybody. Uh, be gentle. Because... Not everybody's at that stage. Wait for people to ask you, yeah? Be, be joy, light, love, and use those tools in your own life. And people will sense it. Those people close to you will sense it. And they will react in two ways. They will either become extremely aggressive towards you, and that means you really have to cut that relationship, yeah? Um, or because that happens because they feel starting to wake up. They start waking up and that's breaking up all of their reality structures and it's a very scary, scary process. So that reaction of aggression is really from fear, deep-seated fear. But you're not their savior, okay? The, the moment and time of saving is over. It's, the new paradigm is about empowerment. Sometimes the best you can do for those individuals is to cut your relationship from them and let them have their own reality. And the other way that people will react is actually really, really positive. They will want to be around you. They will be asking questions. They will be happier. Yeah. So have a look and see how that goes. Be sure not to fall into the savior role yeah, because it's so easy for us to fall into that. Make sure you don't jump in to save people. Don't try to fix their problems. Don't try to fix their lives and to do this work for them. You can do the work that will affect them when you process your own stuff that's affecting you about them. Yeah. But it won't help for you to try and help them or in a very like savior way. The only way that they can really move forward in life or awake or move into the new paradigm with you is for them to feel empowered, be empowered and want to be empowered. Because the new paradigm is not some location somewhere in time space. It's a creation that we are actively creating every single day. And how do we do it? By making those choices. Choosing to respond, choosing to raise our vibrational level and choosing to empower ourselves with all the tool, tools and knowledge and knowings that resonate with us. For the next few weeks, I'm going to be really concentrating on, uh, and I have been for the past few weeks also, uh, and months, on empowerment tools, in mad, uh, manifestation tools, in um, tools that will allow the person to support themselves to live really well and to be able to expand their consciousness. Also, also tools, for example, the sex, love and relationships course is one that is very much about... I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted here. It's a little hummingbird I just went here and I'm standing right there, flying right there. So that course, obviously I have to talk more about it. Um, it's not just about sex, love, and, and soulmates. It's, it's really about how we function on a physical plane with other human beings and how our, the sex of the body we were born in and the gender of the body we were born in affects everything we do in life. From our work, our relationships, how we relate to others, how we communicate. Um, everything is affected by it. And that course goes really deeply into it. So that's another tool. Uh, so to summarize about friends, relatives, and loved ones who are still asleep, allow them to stay asleep. That is their higher self choice. 
Process the fears that you may have about being separated from them. Raise your personal vibration because the more, the higher your vibration is and the more tools and information that you have that you, you use on a daily basis, the higher you will raise the vibration of your environment and that will affect and will have a direct effect on those individuals around you. They will be, uh, they will observe everybody on the planet starts off and lives throughout their lives. They learn through copying. They copy, yeah? We observe, we copy. That's how we learn to speak. That's how we learn how to dress, how to um, move, how to communicate. Everything has been a process of watching and copying. And they will sense your vibration. They will sense how every single day your vibration is a little bit higher. At a subconscious level, they will sense it and they will know it, yeah? And they will be able to copy it. And that's the key. <laughs> so, I know I promised on the previous uh, episode that I would be making muffins and that is still in the works. I'm actually, I have actually been um, perfecting the muffins uh, recipe <laughs> so we've been eating a lot of muffins over here I'm go and when we have it done pat I'm going to be inviting my kids so to make it with us uh, so we're going to be having Brett my little boy my seven-year-old boy and Daniela who many of you are already familiar with to make the video together we're going to be making muffins as a family so uh, that's coming I don't know when it's going to be ready so there might be another episode before that one and um, remember, we're here to inspire those who empower us and empower those who inspire us. Until next time, bye-bye.